Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with another video. Um, this is not a tutorial because I am not an expert on this at all, but I wanted to come and try it out with you. So we're going to be doing a slip knot binding, making a journal out of it. Um, probably a journal I'll either use for drawing or for some art journaling. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but um, the um, I'll talk to you about the measurements here in a second. I watched this over on Made by Martha. I really encourage you to go over there and check her out. She did a fantastic job explaining it and um, I learned some things from her that were helpful in my process. So I did make a prototype and I'll tell you what went wrong with the prototype. <laughs> So, um, so between the, the, my initial prototype and prototype number two, I learned that um, my paper was too thin. And so when I punched my holes and I started to bind it, the hole, I had holes that were ripped. So I um, came up with a solution for that, which I'll talk about with you in a second. But this is what the slip knot binding looks like. I love the look of it. I think it's very cool. And um, what we're going to be doing, though, is we're not going to just be binding the white pages. We're going to be making a cover, uh, a chipboard cover, because I like the sturdiness of that. So let me show you how this opens so you can kind of get fascinated with it um, like I am, because I love journals that lay flat. So when you open this, the first page is a little tight. Um, this this um, piece here just seems a little bit tighter than the rest. So we're just going to let that let that go. I wonder if I can loosen that at all. Maybe that did it right there. Nope. It's a little bit tight, but that's the only one that had a problem. So see how it flips? Every page lays completely flat. Now I won't probably be doing mixed media at work in here because you know, you'd have things go through and because I get very, very messy when I do that. Um, but I'm using um, Canson XL mixed media paper. It is 98 pound uh, paper, um, but again, it was still too thin for this project. So let me show you what I did before we um, start assembling this. I want to show you the workaround. So I've cut all of my pieces already. We'll talk about these papers here in a second. Um, so this is the front cover. Okay, so it's gonna go on the front of the chipboard. And then we have an inside page. This is the back cover. They're, they're the same, I didn't care, so. And then this will be an inside cover, and this will be the other inside cover. So, um, but because the pages were too, were too thin, even though you'd think that this would be fine, it's not. Um, additionally, on my, now my first prototype, sorry, for the white, my camera, Webcams do not like white, so my apologies for that. But in my prototype, I folded the papers in half and I tried to punch holes through that, but it actually um, tore the holes completely because it's stretching out. It, the, the, the strings that are binding it through the slip, slip knot are breaking the holes, so you can't do that. If you know a way to do that, I would love to know because I would love to do that. But I thought this would be really cool for making a junk journal in the future if you want to use like there's a lot of creators that create beautiful digitals that are half page so this would be perfect for those digitals it opens up a whole wide array of things i can do um, because there's one particular artist that i love um, to purchase from but she does uh, a lot of half pages so um, my pages measure six inches by eight inches my cover match measures six and one eighth by eight and one eighth. Um, so what we're going to do, because these are too weak, is I cut a, I cut ten strips. We've got ten pages, and we've got ten strips. Now they're imperfect. Um, they're one inch wide, and then I scored them in half. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be folding these in half, and we're going to be gluing them on the side of the page to stabilize it because and in my this prototype this one here 
worked like a charm and you can see it's not it doesn't look weird or anything I've got a little bit of um, glue there because I used Fabri-Tac but it's a great solution and so that's what we're gonna do so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a moment and glue all these on you guys don't need to see that see me do that it's basically just sandwiching it on here like so and then we'll come back and we will start marking and punching our holes and we'll get going on the fun part Okay, this is the last one. Um, I did want to mention in my, uh, the one I showed you, the blue one, the blue uh, journal I already did. I actually did 12 pages. So this one I'm only doing 10, just for the purposes of the tutorial. You can put as many or as few pages as you want to. Obviously, the more pages, the longer it's going to take you to put the journal together because you're working, you have to weave that um, wax thread through every hole um, you know however many pages you have and so it can be kind of tedious so I'm just lining that up and gonna just give that a squish and while these are drying I'm gonna make sure that that Fabri-Tac is nice and dry this is what it looks like so you can see we've got some 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 more bulk to the the side of those pages see that okay so we're going to set that over there because we need to go ahead and prep our covers because when you start this process you actually start with the back page or in this case the back cover and so we want to have that ready to go so both of these are the same so let's see what do we want to have be on the front inside cover and the back inside cover. I think I want this one on the front inside cover. So this will be back. So I'm going to set those two aside. And we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and glue these on. So um, I'm just going to speed that up or cut it out, whichever. You guys don't need to see me glue. So I will be back in a jiffy. So when doing this, obviously you want to make sure that your um, your papers are going the right direction so I'm making sure that this is going um, up like that and I'm using Fabri-Tac so that allows me a lot of time to uh, make adjustments so even though even that uh, one on the other side I could probably move still but it looks pretty good see a little bit of white white core so we might have to I'm not going to worry about it it's just a slight bit you can see that just a bit. Um, I don't want to mess with it while it's wet though because that can create a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same with the um, with the front. Okay, this is the last panel. I'm just going to go ahead and glue this on. And then I'm going to try to remember to trim off this excess once it's dry. I see some white core. We can probably ink it up and, and not have a problem, but we'll see how I feel as we go along okay so there we go so this was supposed to be the front cover so I'm going to set that aside so the back cover is where we need to start and we also need to punch our um, where's our paper there's our paper so now we need to punch our holes in both the papers and the covers and this is coming off Let's see if I can Give those a press again. Let's see if we can get some more stickage. There we go. That looks better. So I'm going to start with the um, with the cover. So this is the front. So I want to make sure that I'm punching my holes on this side. When we get to the back on that prototype, the blue one, I actually punched the uh, front cover or the back cover one or the other wrong so I'm going to be more cognizant of that today so um, I'm going to get my zero gravity ruler I like to use this to figure out my center so we know that this is eight and a quarter so we know it's going to be about two and ten on this zero gravity ruler or just slightly under so I'm going to go ahead and move that up so that I can see here and um, I'm going to go about a, an eighth of an inch from this edge. Okay, so I'm going to go about right there. Oh, that was the wrong spot. I didn't even look at the zero. Oh, my word. Let's try that again. Oh, my goodness. Off to a rock and start again. 
This happens to me all the time. Okay, right there. Hoping that that's going to show. I'm going to actually get my black marker out because I'm having trouble seeing through through that um, paper. So, oh, where did it go? Where's my marker? Because we're going to punch this out so we don't need to worry about it showing. That's going to give us a good view. So then I'm going to go one and an eighth or yeah, one and an eighth inches in from this um, the right edge here. Put a mark right there. And the same with this side. So I'm going to go at the three inch mark, going about an eighth of an inch in, like so. <clears throat> Cap that up and I'm going to get my um, eyelet setter. I found this to be easiest because I can punch through multiple layers of the papers when I get to that point. So I'm just going to, and what I'm doing, I'm trying to show you, can you see the dot? There we go. It's really hard. It's really hard angle because I have to lift my, my arms up so that like my elbows are even with my shoulders. <laughs> it's not an easy, it's not an easy feat. So I'll just suffice it to say I'm putting the, I'm looking for that black dot into the center of my eyelet hole. So that's what I'm aiming for. Get the crud out of there. Okay. There we go. So let's go ahead and do the other cover too while we're at it. Um, I think we're going to be okay with this white showing. I'm just going to ink it really quick here and just so that I can move along. <laughs> move along, move along. You know how some things can be distracting and that's one of those things that's going to distract me if I don't deal with it now. Yeah, it's all right. Okay, this one seems better. Got a little bit of white showing on the top here. If that doesn't bother you, don't don't worry about it. Got a little bit more on this edge for some reason. My cutting was not perfect. Okay, so again, that's the front and this is our back. So the mistake I made before is I punched on the same side and obviously that's wrong. So I'm gonna turn this over so <laughs> I'm going to turn this over so that I know that this is the front, this is the back. So that means my holes are going to go on this side. So I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to, uh, I gotta, I gotta do it with the pen. It's going to be tricky going through the hole. I've got a small tip pin here, so that should be good there and there and there. Okay, boom. And the reason why you have to have the cover, at least the back cover done and ready first is because you, the very first uh, knotting, slip knot that you do is involving your back cover and your second to the last, or your last page in this case. So your cover, your back cover and your last page. So there we go. Boom. Okay, so now we're going to use this as our template for, make sure that's right. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so this is our front, this is our back. So I'm going to go ahead and bring over um, one of these, uh, one of the pages, and I'm going to set it under here, and I'm going to turn it over. So I'm putting it on the back side so that I can make my mark through those holes, but then I'm going to, um, um, slap it down, smack it down, shake it down, <laughs> and go like that so that I know that I'm even-ish. Got an uneven edge there. Hmm, interesting. Plopping that down, trying to make sure it doesn't move. And if I keep leave this pin uncapped, it'll dry out. So it's a Faber-Castell pit pin. It's one of my favorite permanent pins. I use it in my planner. Okay, so now that we have that, we can start punching these holes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, um, I'm going to grab three pages plus this one. So I'm going to see if I can go through four pages. I don't know if I can and be accurate. So let's see how it feels. Yeah, that'll be okay. So again, I'm putting that, my eyelet setter hole over that dot. 
That's a little tough, but I think we can do it. I'm going to move my hand so I can get a better hold on it because I do not want it to slip. Okay, there we go. One more. There we go, got some of them. So now I'm gonna use this page as my template because again, I it doesn't really work very well for me to um, try to just punch over this because it's hard, my eyes get a little bit weird. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my holes and then grab a few more pages here in a second. Just a dot, dot. Again, perfection is not at play in the studio, not today or any other day. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna accept what, we, what we're doing here and be okay because it's just a journal. In this case, it's an art journal or a drawing journal or something. I've been doing a lot of drawing, so I have a resolution to teach myself how to draw, to really just get put my head down and learn how to do it. When you have to, to learn, you have to do it. You have to play, you have to make mistakes, you have to scribble and do all that stuff to, that was not cool. There we go. Okay, we're almost ready to start binding. I love this binding though. I think it's really, really cool. So now I'm gonna do the last two pages use this as my template again to mark my holes. Try not to miss any steps guys. I will um, take you through one or two pages of the slip knot binding and then I will um, uh, probably cut it out or speed it up. It just depends on how long the overall video ends up being in the end. So, okay. is a little bit fiddly so I hope that you'll bear with me as I um, play because I have long fingernails and it's making it's made my life very difficult they are already need a fill and it's not even been two weeks so um, they grow really fast okay so let's make sure we have ten pages so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Okay, boom, I cap that ink up. Get some unnecessaries out of the way. Crumbs off my desk. Alrighty, so this was our front, so this is our back. So you want to lay your back cover down so that your inside is, um, is, let's, yeah, it's going the right way, is this way, okay? And um, what you want to do is you want to figure out how many pages you have. So we have 10 pages. You take the number of pages. Thank you. Thank you so much. Made by Martha. Um, fantastic instructions. So what she said is you take the number of pages and multiply it by three. So I've got 10 pages. So 30 is my, is my number. So you want three lengths of 30. So I'm going to just use my ruler here to make those lengths here. So I'm just gonna set that there and we got one, two. We probably don't need that much because I um, I ended up cutting off my excess off my prototype because I didn't really, I decided I didn't want anything hanging off of it in terms of dangles or anything like that. If it was a different kind of journal, I would do that differently. But this is just an art journal or drawing journal whichever I decide. I'm kind of thinking that I want an art journal that can be more private. So I might use it for that, we'll see. I am uh, almost to Christmas, to uh, Christmas break, oh my goodness. Summer break, I don't remember if I mentioned that in the beginning. Um, today is Saturday, the 15th of June. 2024 and school gets out on Tuesday. We have a half a day and then we have a couple of months off. So, and we are 
tired our team are. it's just it's just teaching children and being around children all the time with their needs and their challenges is is really it's exhausting um, I don't know how our teacher does it I work in special education so it's even it's even more challenging I'm going to get these threads over here so that I don't have to tangle with them so what you're going to do is you're going to place your first page I've got kinks in this I am using a lightweight waxed thread um, it's called wax line and I did it in that uh, journal. I'm thinking that in the future I might try a different wax thread, maybe one like the one I bind my journals with. Um, but um, yeah, we're going to use this today. So you basically fold it in half, get your ends as even as you possibly can. <clears throat> and then you want to grab your loop. Okay, so I've got my loop here. And I'm going to take my first page. Now, if you were printing digitals, you would want to be checking the direction of your paper every single time. But because mine are all white pages, I am not worried. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of pinch this because wax thread does have an ability to kind of uh, squish together and stay a little bit. And I'm going to put this through the hole in the paper as well as through the hole in the in the back cover and then you open up this loop like this and you pull those two threads through okay and I found it easiest to just pull this towards myself and give it a yank okay kind of let that fall out of your way then you're going to go to your second string okay so I'm going to find my ends again Okay, it doesn't have to be precise, but, and they do get, I do have found that they get uneven as you begin to do the binding. I'm going to give that a pinch again, and then I'm going to kind of pick this up just so I can get, get to it and get it through. That seems to be off. Let me push that up a little bit. There we go. I can't get my camera any closer. I apologize if it's too far away. Um... I mentioned before I have an arm that is not, it only has two adjustments, so it either comes, um, everything goes up or everything goes out or everything comes forward. It's not as flexible as my other arm, but it's a lot stronger, so I, I like that it, I know that it's going to hold my stuff really well. So again, we went uh, talk and talk and talk, and we went through that middle thread there, that loop, and we're going to give that a tug. Okay, and why are we off? We'll see. Make those, let those fall to the side as well. One more time, we're going to find our ends. Sorry for my rapid movements of my arms. I know that that bothers people. Um, so, my apologies. Rich, repetitive movements are, are just part of the nature of this this process so I'm going to pick this up just for ease and get it through oh didn't get that pinched very well maybe twist it a little bit there we go I'm going to put it through the paper and the back cover and then pull that through open up your loop so I've got my loop here which is what I just pulled through the hole and I'm going to pull those two strings through and then pull. Give it a gentle yank. And that's perfect. Awesome. Perfect as in I love it. Okay, so now you want your second page. So you're just going to get this in position. Go back to your first string. I like to make sure that this first knot is very uh, secure. And I think if I was using wax thread that was heavier waxed, I would not be having the slippage that I'm having that I experienced in my prototype as well as this. So I'm already have uneven edges so I'm just gonna clip that off. And I, when I watched uh, uh, Made by Martha she was clipping them off and I was just trying to deal with them um, but I think it's easier to just trim them down. Um, okay so now you're pulling this through and let me get these other string, strings out of the picture here. And so when you get to this point, I pull, try to pull it as far here as I can with still having room. And then I separate these two strings. 
Okay, this is the way it worked best for me. And I'm gonna pull those two strings through there. Okay, and then pull. Pull, pull, pull. Got glue. Got glue on me. Okay. So in my very first prototype, um, this whole tour like right out of the gate. So that stabilizing, using that piece of, um, that extra piece of paper was really um, a good choice. So that's nice and tight. I'm gonna do these next two holes and then I'm gonna go ahead and either speed it up or cut it out. I don't think you need to see it again. So I'll probably come back um, at the very last page and put on the back, on the front cover and then, um, and then yeah, at the end. So I hope you know what I mean. Pull that through. Sometimes I get a little bit of a hiccup here and I, because of the way that I did that, it kind of gets, get, gave me a little bit of a problem. So I'm just gonna give that a, a better tug there. Okay, like so. Again, don't worry if it's not perfect. Um, you know, I mean, if you're into perfection, then you know, you might um, add a different um, step in here to make sure that yours is lining up the way that you want it to, but I'm not worried about it. So again, sorry, I neglected to say, this is our, our two threads. So we are putting it through the hole, okay? Pulling it out through the bottom and getting a hold of it pulling these strings kind of tight-ish, like a smaller loop, then pulling this and grabbing that and pulling those two strings through. Again, that's what works for me. Do, do you do you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this and I'll be back in a jiff. Okay, we are on the last page and then the cover. I will tell you I had one page tear because I had a kink in it and I pulled too hard, so I'll have to repair that later. But I'm not too concerned about it, so just gonna put this last page in. So again, just as a review, you're taking your open, your two strings, feeding it through the hole from the outside in, okay? And then when you get here, I pulled it too far. You're gonna put your strings through here. I should have left that out. Sorry guys, I wasn't prepared to speak again. Okay, and then just pull gently. Don't pull too hard like I did. Okay, just give that a little tug. Okay, and then let's do this one. So this is what I mean when I say, you know, perfection is not is not the important part. Like. In my life, I feel like if I show up, if I try, if I bring all my humanity to the table and I do my best, I'm happy. Like, I'm happy with that. And that was not always the case for me. Like, if I, if, if I did something and it was imperfect, I would toss it in the trash. I would not be okay with that. So, um, you know, healing and growth um, gets us to a place where we can be okay with imperfection and we can be okay with our best attempts to try something new and um, whether we succeed or fail we have tried and that is the important part so this is where i got stuck before so i have a little bit of a slack there so just pulling gently this is what our binding looks like so far so you can see that's where it tore so i'll have to fix that somehow so it is okay. So now the important part here is to make sure that you're going the right direction. So this is our this is our back, okay? So this is the back, this is the front, right? Or do I have that backwards now? I have that backwards again because it's gonna go like that. So that makes this actually the front and that the back. And that's not upside down. It's not a problem. It would be a problem if this was, if you had digitals and your pages were going every which way but loose. I don't know how this happened um, because I started with my last page, which was which is my cover, my back cover. So I'm not sure why that's happening. So I'm gonna turn this over. Just make sure that everything's going in the right direction. So my inside cover is the right direction, and my 
uh, inside back cover and my inside front cover is also going in the right direction. So I'm going to turn this over and we're going to put the um, put the front cover on. I don't know which is which now. Um, that would be an important thing to watch though. I'm not sure what I did. If you guys saw it and I missed it, you let me know. So now we're going to do the last normal slip stitch and then we're going to tie it off and I'll show you roughly how I do that. I had a really hard time in my prototype or in my last, yeah, my prototype. So it's, it's tricky. So there we go. We won't tie it off until we've got all three of these uh, finished though. So I'm just going to even up those ends and put that through that hole. Okay. And then again, you're just getting the loop to a manageable size and then just putting your two strings through one of the loops. That's how you're creating your slip, your slip stitch. As far as I can tell, I'm doing it correctly. Um, I may learn that I've done something amiss and, um, and I'll correct that in future, future projects. I don't worry too much about it. I'll go ahead and get that in there. So all in all, this probably took me, all that binding probably took me uh, 20 minutes, I would say. Oh, come on. Kara, Renee, you're on the, you're at the finish line. Come on, you're at the finish line. Kind of like school, right? I cannot wait. My favorite thing to do when summer starts is to get up in the morning and have my quiet time out on the deck, listening to the birds and feeling the fresh air, fresh morning air, drinking my coffee and just enjoying, just enjoying everything that's around me. Okay, so there we go. So, boom, beautimus, love it. Okay, so now this was hard, you guys. I'm gonna tell you right now, this was hard. So basically what you have to do is you have to get this string behind these two strings. And you know, you can do it however it works for you. I'm gonna try it without the needle. I tried it with a needle before and I think maybe I confused myself because I was trying to touch too many things. So this comes around this side, okay? So that was that was to the left. So now we're gonna go, that was to the right, excuse me. Now we're gonna go the opposite direction and go, I'm gonna just flop that under there. And then we're gonna push it back through between the cover. If I can see what I'm doing the uh, cover and the page, front or back, whichever you distinguish. And Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, and this is hard to see on camera, guys. I'm so sorry. There we go. Okay, so basically what you're doing is you're going to tie a knot around your slip knot. So that feels loosey-goosey, but that's okay. So you're going to tie it uh, once and then do a backwards knot. So I have trouble with these, so I have to think about it like so. I'm going to, that seems really weird there, but we're gonna be okay with it. All right, so I want these, I'm gonna leave these strings long this time, so I'm gonna come way down here and make it go below. Um, oh, no, that's the bottom. We'll trim those in a minute. I don't wanna cut the wrong end off, sorry or the wrong length. So again, we're, this is gonna be trickier because we don't, we can't wiggle, we don't have enough, and as much room there, but we're gonna slide this string in under the cover or between your back, your last page and your second to the last page, and then poke it through here and cross over that, um, that knot, okay, like that. And then we're gonna go the opposite way with this one. This worked a lot better than when I was, before I was on camera. That's a rare thing. <laughs> Usually things go better off camera than on camera. It was just felt really fiddly. It still feels fiddly because you're dealing with a floppy cover. Tighten that up. Get away with my, get away with, away from me. So we're just gonna 
get that cinched down. See, I think I'm doing something wrong there that I'm not getting a tight knot, but we will um, we'll think about that and see what I'm doing there. I think I needed to cinch up that that last slip knot before I tighten these strings, but you know, we learn as we go, we learn as we try, and every time you try it, it will get easier and you will refine your process. I love the gaps though, because if I used this for mixed media or for more wet media or watercolor, I don't know that I'd use it for watercolor, it's mixed media paper, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. So again, we're gonna take this string and I'm going to put it under the cover and run that string through there, okay? So we went to the right that time, so now we're gonna go to the left of our slip knot binding. And I'm just gonna see if I can see that enough. Yep, there we go. Bring that around, okay? This is the tricky part because I don't know how to get to retighten this before I start pulling this. You know what I mean? It's it's hard. It's hard to like picture. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go with it. I think that's pretty good. So you tie it in one uh, in a forward knot and then in a backward knot. Got way too much thread here. As per usual. Okay. So Let's turn it over. So this is the front cover. Looks pretty darn good for somebody that's never done this before, I must say. Okay, now we can start cutting our strings because that's the front, this is the back. And I'm hoping that not everything is too tight. My other one, I had a tight front page, so I'm hoping that's not the case. So I'm gonna get those other strings out of the way because I want this one to be longer than the journal. So I'm gonna go about there. And then the next one, I want to go um, about there as well. Maybe a little longer, we'll see. We can always fudge it later. And then our last one is just gonna be short, like there. I may end up cutting them off, I'm not sure. So let's see how she opens, okay? Yep, that first page is a booger, a booger. I'm not sure why that is, but I can't even turn that. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong there that I'm getting that result. Maybe we just have to do that. Maybe you just have to fudge the movement of the spine now. It seems like there's a knot that's locking it in, so you have to kind of wiggle the cover, but I can work with that. So they all open up and they lay nice and flat. So beautiful, it's not as thick as my other one, so I think I would have liked more pages. Um, that's the difference, this is the first one that I did off camera, and this is the one we did together. So that is it for today, guys. I um, hope that I wasn't too confusing. I know it's a little bit fiddly, and being that I, I mean, I did, a proto did two prototypes, but you turn the camera on and things tend to go awry. And so thank you so much for sticking it out with me and I hope that it made sense and I hope that you'll hop on over and check out Made by Martha's video. I will link that video in the description box and I will also try to remember to link these papers in case anybody's interested. If I forget, please just let me know. Um, again, I'm on the, the end of the school year so I'm I don't have all my brain cells right now, so, um, but I'll do my best. So I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.